The kettlebell snatch can be one of the most difficult kettlebell exercises to master. I'm gonna break it down for you step by step in this video to make it easier for you to develop your flow. It's really important that you learn how to use your body in a mechanically efficient manner. So if you look at different uh, demonstrations of the snatch, you're gonna see that there's a lot of individual differences from how one person uses their body to the next. So the first thing we see is that there's repeats. The idea of the kettlebell snatch is not the heaviest snatch that you can perform one time like you would in Olympic lifting. Rather, it's repeats to have a submaximal load and be able to find a rhythm, which is a rhythmic, rhythmical or what we call a cyclical type of movement. And this is based on inertia a body set in motion stays in motion. So let me break this down for you step by step. Now, if you're learning snatch off of YouTube or just from watching someone, you may interpret it as two movements. So let me show you how a lot of people are interpreting the snatch like two movements, sort of one, two, one, two, and kind of punching it up. If we really break it down step by step, we're gonna see that it's actually six mechanical phases of movement all put together. So the first thing you have to understand is the stance, okay? Your stance, it should be balanced, not too wide, too wide, it's going to be awkward to shift your weight. Not too narrow, obviously, you're, you're not balanced. You're going to hit your legs with the kettlebell. So you set it up just a little bit wider than the bell. Now we sit back. The hips are loaded before you pick it up. Okay. As far as how I do it and how a lot of lifters will do it is I'm just going to angle a little bit. Okay. And so if I put my feet even, just maybe 30 to 45 degrees where it's comfortable, and I see now that the right foot is ahead of the left foot, okay? And that is because you're gonna push from that rear leg. So your balance is gonna be here as the kettlebell is accelerating up, okay? There. Now, the next part, your body is connecting to your arm immediately. So here, okay, it's connected to the body and then here, you have that extension. Okay, the knees extend, hips extend, torso extends. That's what's gonna create the thrust for the kettlebell to accelerate, okay? So the first drill, you just take something light, you hold it between your arm and body and now you do the swing, so you don't have an arm, you have a body. And that book's not falling, okay? So that's the first part you wanna get, is that arm-body connection, where you're really using your body and not pulling with the arm. Now you'll see this rear hand is moving, okay? That rear hand's moving, because you're not gonna use half of your body. You wanna use your whole body, get that extension, Lifting, okay? Not one side moving, the other side shut down. Get that flow. Now the next part, once you're here, we don't want to come out in order to come up because snatch is up. So from here, it's up, right? Sometimes you'll uh, see the analogy of a zipper, like you're zipping, zipping it up, okay? So that can be helpful to you to think of zipping. 
from here, that's the low swing, inertia, get it moving. Now it's coming up. So how do we change direction? The way we change direction is through rotation. It's coming forward. If I continue forward, it's going to come out. Okay? And that's a very inefficient path. So if I, if I continue forward here and bring that to its conclusion, it's coming all the way around. Okay, big circle, you see? And that's a common mistake is just kind of flopping and banging. So instead, I keep that arm body contact. Just as it starts to leave the body, when the arm starts to leave the body, that's when there's a rotation, okay? So that front hip is gonna pull and that creates the change of direction. Coming forward, coming up. If you look from the side, it's like the letter J. It's coming forward, coming up. Now a way you want to understand that is that the kettlebell doesn't move forward too far. If you're facing against the wall, you don't want the kettlebell to come out and hit the wall. Instead, it's coming up. It's coming up. Okay, so it's coming up. So those are the first two phases. We have a low swing, and then it's acceleration, acceleration pull. You see both halves of the body are opening. I'm looking up here. You're going up the elevator. You don't go out to go up, you go up. Okay, at that point, now you're getting the most technical part. That's called the hand insertion, where the kettlebell literally comes from the hook grip hand opens and it moves inside. And what we don't want is that scraping. You don't want the scraping where it's gonna tear the skin on your hand, it's gonna burn out the grip. You wanna be able to move the hand inside so that, analogy, I'm putting my hand in the glove, it smoothly goes through that window there, okay? And the way you have to do that is you have to loosen your grip. So you have to loosen the grip so the hand is free to move you're catching right here on the thumb. So you're jumping from the fingers to the thumb here. Now we see that when the hand is here, it's all the way inside such that you could wiggle here. And look further. Look at this here. It's touching. Now, if the technique is not perfect, you're gonna have some variation where maybe the hand is not all the way. See, it's only halfway. You see there's a, a big space here. I don't want that, it's not as stable. So this, it's here, okay? That means the hand all the way inside. Low swing, into the acceleration pull, into the hand insertion. the arm is bent. It hasn't extended yet. The arm is bent, but you see that the kettlebell is higher than my head. It's above the head. It's not all the way up yet. Here, grip is loose. So you think about your stance, okay? You think about your center line, okay? So my stance, my center line, okay? Think of it in martial arts, right? Protect yourself. So, let me show you what can go wrong here. What can go wrong is the ball coming up. So the direction of the fingers sets the direction. My fingers point up, kettlebell's gonna go up that way. And that looks like this. See the ball? The ball is high. And so what happens if I bring this to the conclusion is Plop, it falls over, okay? It crashes, okay? So, kettlebell's upside down, it's gonna fall to its heavy point, right? So how do you avoid that? Is you learn to loosen, look at the hand. Not here, it's here, here, okay? Not here, it's here, so you break 
You break at the wrist, it's like the crane's neck, right? Wax on, wax off. Okay, here, more here. So the fingers dictate, and now look, the handle stays high. See, the handle's high. The handle's up, the ball is low. Here the ball is up, here the handle is up. And you can play with release. Okay, you start low, get comfortable, but you see that the handle stays up every time. Good rep, good rep. Here's a bad rep, ball goes high, ball goes high. Good rep, now. Use the legs, use the back, lift, it's up, 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 okay? Now the hand is free to move. And now it just comes up. That's the fixation, the fourth phase. Elbow is locked, biceps next to the head, thumb is facing back, okay? If I'm looking in the mirror, I do not want to see my hand. Looking at the hand, it's too much rotation here. Too much, now it has to rotate back, okay? So, thumb is back. Here's my thumb. It's facing behind me. Okay, little rotation's okay. Rotate a little, that's good, but that's too much. Okay, so thumb back, pinky forward. Now, so I have one, arm body as it leaves the body, that's the rotation. The handle stays high. Loose grip, move inside. Now, fixation, everything stops moving. Okay, your arm stops moving, kettlebell stops moving, body's not moving, feet are not moving. Okay, it's fixed. Now it comes down. Now, that downward, it's the reverse of the upper. So, what do we want to avoid as the hand's inserting when the kettlebell's going up? We don't want the ball to crash, okay? We don't want smash. What we want is move the hand inside. So now as it's coming down, it's the reverse. It moves around, okay? We're not flipping like this. You flip like this, look, it's falling from here, so it's gonna go fast, okay? Turn the palm, move back. That's called deflection, move back. Now it's falling from here, not from here, from here. Okay, show you some bad reps. Bad reps, you flip it over. Well, maybe it's not bad, it's bad for me. Maybe you like it, but you have to understand what you're doing. And when you flip it, it's falling from high. It's falling from high, which means it's going fast. Now, at the same time, I don't wanna push the kettlebell forward, okay? Because I wanna go down, gravity, vertically down, right? I push it forward, creates a big arc. Now, that starts moving fast, okay? That starts moving fast. Then you get tired very quickly, more quickly. Okay, you have to fight about this. Think about grappling. You're here, no, okay, boom. Pulled out of your base, okay? It's your base. You don't reach for it. You keep it here, okay? So the way you can set that part up is you stand right against the wall, right against the wall. Okay, I can't move, the wall blocks me, I move back. Okay, I can't move forward, the wall blocks me, I move the body back. I move the body back, the palm turns up. There's that elevator falling down. Okay, if we talk about optimal mechanics, what you're trying to do here, what you're working towards, turn this palm up, move the body back, bring the upper arm in contact with the body, here. Okay, so again, you're sucking in that shoulder, retracting the scapula, pulling the shoulder, connecting with the lat here. Okay, so again, you have that contact. Now your body is helping to absorb, not the arm pulling. Okay, so it's important to get that feeling. When you're here, turn the palm up, move the body back. 
My favorite cue for the drop is lead with the elbow, okay? Lead with the elbow, don't lead with the hand. You lead with the hand, it's a big arc. Lead with the elbow, it stays. Now some lifters will actually bend the knee here. Okay, they'll bend the knee to shorten the distance further. Again, that's optional. You gotta play with it and see what works good for you. Or just extend the hips, kind of deflect the trunk. Okay, so deflect the trunk here, palm up. Okay, you wanna bend, you add that knee bend to shorten it. So elbow leads, elbow leads. And that's gonna allow the kettlebell to move more slowly. As the kettlebell's moving down here in the high part, you're changing the grip, okay? So you're reversing the insertion from the thumb back to the fingers, skipping the middle, no scraping here back, okay? You pull it back. And you wanna pull it here. You don't wanna wait and pull it here because that's gonna put that on your grip, okay? It's gonna make it more difficult for you to break down the form sooner. Okay, so the elbow leads, the palm turns up, the body moves back, change the grip, change the grip here, important about the fifth phase, so the sixth phase, fifth and sixth, so we have one, okay, that's the low swing inertia phase, accelerate, it's going up fast, with the rotation, acceleration pull. Third phase, hand moves inside. That's a hand insertion, it continues up. Fixation, see the weight shifting here, under, okay? Fourth phase there, you take a breath in the top if you need to pace yourself, okay? Fifth phase, change direction, amortization, you're changing direction, okay? Move the body back, turn the palm up, let the elbow fold here. It's moving, as it's moving, arm connecting to the body, change the grip here. Pull the hand back from the thumb to the fingers. It follows, it follows, it follows. When you get to here, arms connected, you push. You push straight back and this other hand gives you that counter pull. Okay, now you're loaded to the explode. Load to the explode. When the kettlebell is coming back, it's the part you can't see. You don't want the kettlebell moving in the hand, okay? Bad reps, watch behind me. So it's moving in the hand. It's gonna do this to the grip, okay? When you get here, push, push, like a train sliding on a track. Straight line, kettlebell extension of the hand, push. Push, 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 push. Okay, so we put that all together. The final and most important is the breathing. You're normally gonna do a three breath pattern. When you need to slow it down, you can take additional breath in the top position. Three breath pattern. Want to slow it down? When you change hands, one swing. Now you're on the other side. That's a thorough breakdown of the kettlebell snatch. That'll help you get started. Have fun.